How's it going guys and happy new year. Welcome to 2023 on the Jonathan Chow YouTube channel. Um, just wishing you guys all the best for this next year and I hope you guys are excited for all the content coming. Just a quick update from me. Some of you guys might know we just had another beautiful baby boy. So it's been pretty quiet on the channel but I am still building in the background. I want to keep these builds going. Um, so yeah, things are going to change, it's going to get better. Uh, we're going to be back to the regular content shortly. So I thought I'd give you guys an update on all the cars. Uh, we'll start off with my wife's car. This is her 2015 Holden Trax. Um, she's had it since brand new. It's got low Ks. It's never missed a service. And now it's just throwing a whole bunch of codes and we are absolutely sick of this car. Um, so we have replaced it with a car that we've always really wanted. Um, we've got ourselves a Honda Odyssey. We weren't really a fan of the newer models, so we got ourselves the lowest K RB3. This is a 2012 Honda Odyssey with a luxury badge. It's a really nice car. Um, we're really, really enjoying this car, especially with the baby. Uh, it's been great. And we really want to build this into the ultimate family wagon. Who knows, some of the content might make it onto the channel. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys want to see some Odyssey videos. No turbo charging, but yeah, just a really nice, clean family wagon is what we're looking for. The Civic, well, the Civic's not here for good reason. I can't wait to show you guys. It's been the most exciting thing which has happened to me, apart from the baby, uh, in the past few months. And yeah, I can't wait to show you guys the Civic. Which leaves us with the 79. And unfortunately, pretty much since new, it's kind of developed a noise in the transmission, which has gone worse. And it's been back and forth from the dealer. Um, I have a pretty good idea of what it is. Uh, I think it is a hydraulic issue, uh, but it could also be the clutch. And to be honest, I don't want to know. It's a new car. I want them to sort it out. Um, so I've left it in the hands of Toyota Castle Hill. They have been pretty helpful so far, but Toyota Australia have already said they're not going to warrant the car because it has a GVM upgrade. Um, pretty ridiculous, I know. But I don't want to know about it. They can sort it out. Um, and yeah, it's kind of left everything in limbo because I've got a canopy coming in March. I'm really excited for that. Um, and I also want to do a little trip in June. So I'm really hoping that this will sort itself out uh, quickly um, because yeah, everything's in a bit of a limbo. Um, and the RX-7. The RX-7 has had a pretty big Christmas and I've just finished the battery location to the boot. I've done a wiring upgrade, which I believe is one of the most overlooked upgrades you can do to a performance car and a rotary in general. Um, yeah, so I plan on showing you guys in depth uh, my relocation and also the wiring upgrades that I've done. Um, as always, I've included all the parts in the description. Make sure you leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, it really does actually help to push the video. Let's get into it. So I've just finished relocating the battery from behind the intercooler all the way to the spare wheel well. And there's good reasons for that. Uh, the first reason we're saving weight by removing the spare wheel. Um, and also it's a pretty big compartment to house a battery uh, whilst also maintaining the full boot space. Uh, secondly, we're also going to be doing a fuel upgrade on this car, a full fuel upgrade, uh, and it's going to be conveniently located right next to the fuel tank uh, for massive explosions and not the explosion you're thinking about, we're thinking about explosions inside the engine. By relocating it into the boot, it's also in its perfect spot to supply power directly to the fuel pumps. Simply put, the shorter and the larger diameter of the cable, the less resistance and subsequently the high output you're gonna get at the fuel pump and also the starter motor because we're gonna be rewiring that circuit. And like I said before, we've removed the battery out of this whole heatsink. Um, batteries, you know, when they're hot, they're pretty inefficient. You really shouldn't be mounting lead acid batteries inside the cabin, sealed or not, full stop. Um, by also upgrading to lithium batteries, we're also saving seven kilos and increasing our usable amp hours by 50% from 14 amp hours being an AGM battery. So I know it's 28 amp hour, but you can only use 14 amp hours without damaging the battery um, or before that battery is essentially discharged. Um, we are upgrading to 22 amp hours on the Lithium Max Race 9. Um, so yeah, we're increasing our capacity and we're saving weight. So here is the relocation and it all sits underneath this false floor. So I'll just remove this liner. It all sits underneath this. This is a piece of marine ply from Bunnings. I think it's seven mil thick, if I recall. 
And just like that, this is very removable. Keeps it a stealthy install and puts the battery in its own compartment. Um, so this is a lithium max mount that is clamping the battery down and I had to cut off two of the tabs and weld it at the base of the mount um, so that I can reuse one of the one of the holes on the back wall of the trunk. So a quick look at this lithium max battery. Again, this is the Race 9. Um, it has 900 cold cranking amps, so plenty for this little engine. Um, and it's also got a really cool voltmeter here. So just press test, 13.3 volts, which is the resting state of the battery and it's at 100%. So lithium batteries have a higher voltage than the standard lead acid, um, which helps with the start. Um, yeah, so on the front side and the top side of the terminals, you've got threading. This is a M6 thread. You can either screw on a fitting to use the standard terminals or you can uh, yeah, just run a, a little bolt through it. So from the negative side of the battery, just got a cable to the ground. I have tested this ground and it is sufficient for the RX-7. Um, on the positive side, I've got a double zero gauge cable. It's a really thick running to a circuit breaker. So this is a 200 amp circuit breaker. And if you're gonna get one, make sure you get a good quality one uh, because I've seen a lot of the cheap ones fail. Um, from that side of the circuit breaker, you're going through this Nava battery isolator. Um, this is just a, a battery isolator I got from Bunnings. It's a good idea to do this if the car's not driven regularly. Um, you can use a circuit breaker, but they're not designed to be used as a switch. These circuit breakers can wear out and they do have a trip life. So from this side of the battery isolator, the same cable which runs behind the boot, behind the rear quarter and it exits from underneath this rear seat there. Uh, it just comes out the side here. It runs along the back of the floor pan to the transmission tunnel and all the way along the transmission tunnel to about, where is it? This part there. So I've got an electrical bulkhead there. It is a Moroso through panel bulkhead. And from that side on the other side, Got a double zero gauge, the same cable from that bulkhead to the starter motor. So on the starter motor, you can see two lugs, one which draws power from the battery at the back and one cable which goes to the fuse box in the engine bay. Um, and an interesting thing is that Mazda actually issued this service bulletin and I quote, hard restart after running the vehicle at high speeds on hot days. Vehicle restarts easily after engine compartment cools down. This hard start condition is caused when heat from the engine increases the electrical resistance in the starter wire. So if you are having a hot start problem and you're sure it's not related to compression, this is definitely worth a try. So moving on from the starter motor to the fuse box, this is where things got a little bit messy. I removed the stock charge harness out of the car and cut out all the battery cables. So these are the cables we removed. So the engine ground, uh, the battery ground, the starter cable and the alternator cable. And this is where I started finding damaged wiring, crusty insulation, uh, a lot of splits in the, in the cable. Um, and yeah, it wasn't really expected, uh, but I'm not surprised. These cars are now over 20 years old um, and it's a really hot engine bay in the FD. So after taking the cables out, I re-sleeved the harness in some new split tubing, um, some new electrical tape and put it back into the car. And that's when I started making my new power and ground cables, so starting at the fuse box here. Got a four gauge uh, cable, I think this is the bottom one, four gauge cable running to the alternator. Got a two gauge cable running to the starter, so remember that starter motor on the constant side had two lugs, and also the ground cable uh, without the additional battery uh, ring terminal thing. Um, so from the stock location to the front rotor housing, uh, the factory engine ground. So by doing all this, I've also been able to remove the HKS V-mount battery tray. So this big tray there, the big steel tray, um, I've also been able to remove that and also relocate that fuse box underneath the cold side piping just over there. So everything is really out of the way now. The engine bay is, you know, promoting airflow for the time being because I am planning to put a little catch can over here um, unless you guys have an idea for the catch can, I don't think there is a better spot for it. So hopefully that made sense. And man, what a difference it's made to the start of the car. I can really feel the kick of the starter motor um, and it definitely turns the motor over a lot easier. I'm gonna include a lot of information in the description. So make sure you go and check it out. Leave a comment um, and thank you for understanding. The content is coming back and I can't wait for 2023. Let's wrap the video up with some braps and I'll see you guys in the next video.
We are heading to get takeaway, my new favorite uh, local Chinese joint. This uh, screaming pipe is definitely growing on me. <laughs> oh yeah. It's about 30 degrees outside, got the AC on, aircon's cranking and temperatures very cold. It's cold, it's good. There she is. Prawn crackers, honey chicken, milk tea. Sick cup holder by the way. I'll see you all in the next episode.